Hello, it's Wednesday, March 18th, day two of e-learning. Um, sorry I didn't get to make a video for yesterday's um, agenda. I just, uh, my kids woke up earlier than I hoped they would and I didn't get to quite get to um, as much as I would have liked to. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a few things that will hopefully clear things up. Um, so on the agenda for today is to move on to the organizing ideas from the paragraph of the week. Um, if you started brainstorming yesterday, so partway through the day, I did upload um, a Google slide to maybe make that a little bit easier. But to be honest, the paragraph of the week for most of you is just going to be easier to do on paper, um, unless you have like a computer where you can have um, the ability to edit a slide. You can get an app for that. But if you're just working on your phone, um, that's going to be a little bit um, difficult to do. Um, and then we're also going to continue to work on our quill.org um, or the worksheet versions of whatever you wanted to do. So I'll start off by kind of showing you um, the, well, when it loads, the uh, paragraph of the week. So I do have, you know, text boxes in here um, that will allow you to just, you know, replace the text and start typing whatever, you know, you wanted to. Um, so that's the prompt today. We're here where we're just typing in. So you can just replace where it says type and just type your topic sentence, the beginning of your short story, middle, end, and closing sentence. Um, then continue through the rest of the week. Um, I guess this last slide is really unnecessary, so you can delete it if you want to. Um, and even if I delete it, it will still show up on your topic. But um, today we're primarily working on this. So. I got a question yesterday about, you know, what are you supposed to be writing about? So a narrative is a short story or just a story. So you're supposed to be writing a short story that's like a paragraph long about a time when you felt afraid of something. So like now would be a really good time um, or any other time in the past where you were scared of something. Um, and if you don't really have anything that comes to mind, you can always just make something up, make up a story about a time when someone was scared of something. Or, you know, make your own twist on a movie or something that you watched or read um, that was had a scary plot. So narrative is all just telling a story. And this story is supposed to be, you know, like a paragraph. So it's not going to be super long. you got to work on condensing your language and, uh, you know, getting your point across in a whole paragraph. So when you're organizing your thoughts, the topic sentence is just going to be kind of more like a hook. It's going to want the reader to read, you know, want the reader to keep reading about your scary um, story or the time you were scared. Then your story should have a quick beginning, middle, and end, and then kind of a closing um, that just kind of wraps up your story and lets readers know that you're done without saying, and that was my scary story, or that was the time I felt afraid. You know, something along, you know, a little bit different than that. Um, and then tomorrow we'll get into the drafting and that kind of thing. So each day has its own thing, but this day shares, you know, this slide. Um, shares two days worth of activities. Okay, then the second thing that we do is quill.org. And I know a lot of you guys are not really big fans of that, but with your worksheet, you won't know if you have the right answer for a while, right? Because there's no way to really get it to me to check it. Um, but quill, you will know the right answer. And again, we're, you know, it's going to spend a lot more time working on computers. It's probably better for you to be getting your practice typing. Um, so, you know, it will tell you right away whether or not you got it correct. You know, you're going to get feedback right away. You're going to know whether or not you know this. Um, so that's the great thing about Quill, since I'm not there to, you know, check your papers and grade them and give them back to you, that you will actually know whether or not you know this and you got it right if you do it on Quill. Each one is like 12 questions. I think a couple of you yesterday got your whole week's worth done. I don't know how long it took you, of course, because I've been asked. But I'm sure it wasn't really that much time. Um, so Quill would probably just be, I mean, for those of you that can, just easier because it automatically grades it for you, automatically lets you know if you got it right. It's a little bit of typing practice. Uh, most of you will, I don't know if you can do it on your phone, but you can try. But you're a lot better at typing when it comes to your phone, right, than it does um, when you're on your a keyboard. And then the last thing that I suggest is creating a COVID-19 shutdown journal. Just because what we're living right now, like I said, in class is unprecedented. Nobody has any plan or knows what to do. And someday this will be history. And someday your children will be reading books about what is going on right now. So I know journaling is not for everyone, but it's kind of nice to get, you know, your thoughts out on paper, 
talk about what you're scared of, um, what's exciting to you about this. So you can just create a Google Doc. So you just go and type Google Docs and open up Google Docs. Um, and you can just create a brand new blank one or they have templates. Um, I'm sure that have some journal-like formats or something. I've not really played around with it too much. Um, but, of course, my computer is taking forever to load this when it's usually rather quick. Um, so they have all these templates. So you can just create a brand new blank document. You can title it whatever you want. Um, like COVID, uh, you know, 19 shutdown journal or something along those lines. Uh, you can change the fonts and you can make dated entries or you can just start typing whatever. Um, this is just a suggestion to you so that way later on, uh, years down the road, you can have this document to look back on and just remember what was going on. I would suggest there are a lot of really funny memes going around out there. Um, that I, you would copy and paste some memes into yours, um, things that you don't want to forget that later on, again, when you pull up this journal, um, it will be funny to look back on and remember the thousands and thousands of memes that have come out of this. Um, some funny, some not so funny, but it might be good to remember those as well. Okay. So that's my suggestions as working on your paragraph of the week, the organizing, um, as far as turning things in, in Google classroom for that though. You really don't want to turn that assignment in until Friday. That's when it's due. Um, because if you turn it in, like, after you get step slide one done, then it gives the ownership to me. And then you will not be allowed to edit and work on slide two or three. Um, so, like I said, if you had a computer, I would, you know, working on a, digi a digital version is awesome. Um, but if you had a phone and you didn't want to get the Google Slides app or anything, then I would suggest just doing that one on paper. Um, and then again, for the worksheets for Quill, once you get that week's assignments done, like nobody has come in and mark it as turned in um, in Google Classroom. So you can always be checking Google Classroom, checking your upcoming assignments and just know, OK, I got that one done, even though I did it on a different site. I have it marked here as done. This is kind of like our hub where we check in and see all of our um, due dates and stuff. OK, so make sure you get things turned in, but do not turn the paragraph of the week in until Friday. Um, you could also like turn it in and then leave me a private comment saying I did this on paper. Um, that would be helpful for just you knowing that you, okay, I did it at home. I just got it done on paper and for me as well. It's up to you. All right. So that is the plan for today. If you have any questions, you can email me. Um, I hope to be a little bit more better about, you know, getting these videos done every day before my children wake up. It's nine twelve, and they are all three still blissfully sleeping. Um, so that's the plan. Check by nine o'clock in the morning and I should hopefully have the agenda ready to go for you. All right. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.